Hey guys, John Adams, Modern Design Aquascaping. Today is part two of my water feature design series covering water in motion. If you didn't see part one and you don't understand how to calculate water in motion, hit that link up there and it will send you to a video. Start with that, come back to this. Today's video is about water in motion as it relates to a pond with a skimmer. I'm gonna take you outside. I'm gonna show you the skimmer that I choose to use and I'm gonna to explain to you how that works and how I determine how much water I need to have moving in my pond from the time I plug it in to get optimal operation out of that water feature. Let's go outside and check it out. All right. What I need you to know, your skimmer box. This is an Aquascape Signature Series 1000 skimmer. It is my skimmer cho of choice. I don't really care what skimmer you're using. I'm teaching you a philosophy here. This is my overflow. Determine where your overflow is. This is how I figure out how much water in motion do I have available. The first thing I need to know is inches. So I have five and one half inches from the top of my skimmer down to my overflow. Okay, that's number one. Number two, optimal operating level. For any skimmer, in my opinion, is about an inch to an inch and a half below the opening so that leaves and stuff can actually get in. The purpose of a skimmer is to skim. If the water level's up too high on the skimmer, it's not skimming, it's pulling from the below the surface of the water. Okay, for me, right here, that's about optimal operating level. That's seven and a half inches. So that's my go-to number, five and a half, seven and a half. My number on this skimmer is two inches. I like to have two inches of water in motion. Now, how much water is that? That depends on the size of your pond. Let's go back into the whiteboard and I'm gonna show you that. All right, guys, all of this mathematical madness. Let's tie it all together. Video one, you learned how to calculate your water in motion. Now I've shown you how to figure out how much water you have available based on your skimmer. I'm gonna tie all this together right now let me whip out a pond real fast bam it's the fastest you've ever seen somebody rock a pond right there all right guys let's figure this out fast and furious average length in feet okay this way hey between the rocks not to the liner we're working with surface area of water average width in feet multiply those together that's that one and that one that is going to give you square feet of surface all right guys now you know what your surface area is you're going to divide this by 12 you're going to multiply this times 7.5 that is going to give you a number of gallons per inch of water that is key per inch. Don't forget this part. Hey, per inch. I have two inches available, so I'm gonna double that number. Let me grab my calculator real fast, all right? I'm gonna run through this real quick, just so that it makes more sense to you maybe. We're gonna say that my pond is eight feet between the stones, average this way, 12 feet between the stones, average that way. I'm gonna go 12, oops, that's 112. 12 times eight equals, I got 96. That's my first number. That's my square feet of surface area. I'm gonna divide that by 12. It's gonna go back to eight. Okay, now I'm at eight. Then I'm gonna multiply that times 7.5. That equals 60. Oh, what a nice round number that is. 60 gallons per inch. Okay, that's my inch. I've got two inches of water available. I'm gonna go times two. All right guys, so you have the number. This example affords me 120 gallons of water available for water in motion. You're gonna be able to utilize this same equation to your advantage next time you're designing a water feature so that you don't put too much headwaters on your pond. <laughs> I just... Guys, this is the end for water in motion part two. Part three coming up next time is water in motion as it pertains to pondless waterfall design. Don't miss that one. Do me a favor, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're utterly confused, mystified, whatever, give me two thumbs up. Tell me that you loved it. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, put them right down there in the comment section. I will answer you personally. 
by all means guys, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified immediately about cool water feature projects that we get to be a part of around the world. And if you're tired of all of my silly mathematical problems, just follow my boys on Facebook because they're out in the real world dealing with real water features right now while I'm standing in the basement putting together crazy stuff like this just for you. Stay tuned until next time.